Mark Tremonti is our guest, and I'd like to run through some of the songs, beginning with the very first one, Leave It Alone. Now, you said this was your favorite solo on the album. Is that right? Yeah. I like, um, just like in Alter Bridge's um, brand new start, I like to have a solo that starts with clean guitars, and, and you have this nice, easy, uh, you, you can it builds to the, the big heavy guitar, so you can be very dynamic in the solo and, and say a lot with it, and this, this song set that, that musical bed for me. And it's a great way to open the album. It's a really catchy uh, song that pulls you in. Yeah, I think uh, I think the reason I chose it was um, because of the intro. Um, Elvis had uh, this great um, effect going on the guitar in the beginning that sounded like it's coming to get you. And I figured that'd be a good way to start off the album. The second song is So You're Afraid. A lot of heavy shredding, very powerful drums on this song. Yeah, So You're Afraid was um, one of the tougher songs to get um, recorded, you know, it was um, one of my favorite songs in the album. Um, it was it was up for being the lead off track on that on that record as well. But um, I th- had to do some work rewriting lyrics and whatnot in those verses. Those verses really really were a tough time for me to sing because they were so low. The, but the chorus was always one of my favorites, so we uh, we made it work. And when and when I did my uh, guitar instructional DVD, I did a section on you know heavy metal rhythm guitar playing and the riffs that I came up for that. I put into so you're afraid and built them built a song out of those riffs. Third song is called Wish You Well, and I understand it's a song that you've actually had in your head since eighth grade. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. When I was uh, a young kid, I had a four track, and I'd try, and, and I had a little um, Dr. Rhythm Boss drum machine, and I would, you know, record songs, and that was the one that turned out the coolest. That was my favorite song. When I was doing demos for the One Day Remains record, I, I did a demo with that where Garrett actually came in and did the drums on it. And when we were doing this album, he said, remember that song we did uh, back in the day we jammed on, had so much fun? Um, and I said, wish you well, does it go like this? He's like, that's the one, you know? And uh, are you serious? You want to try this for this record? And everybody's like, yeah, we'll try it. We played through it and we're all smiles. It's like, you know, if this song makes us that happy, it's this fun to play, let's do it. And it turned out to be one of our favorite songs. But you, re- you can remember it by virtue of the fact that you recorded it on some rather antique equipment from all those years ago. I still have it. I still have it on tape. Huh. Yeah, I've got it all queued up right, you know. <laughs> so <Yeah>. cool. Because <laughs> again, if it were me, I'd be forgetting all these things. Oh, I had a great riff. I had like the opening <laughs> of Stairway to Heaven. Uh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I record like, everything so I don't forget. I interviewed a guy one time who um, actually in the... Uh, before cell phones would go to a phone booth and would call his home machine his Mm -hmm. home if he was out at a restaurant he'd come up with an idea he would go to a a telephone booth call his home machine and hum it or riff it into the phone yeah we're much luckier these days to have (laughs) you know i used those little sony tape recorders for years and years and years and finally i use my phone and my my computer now because it's so much easier to, to track things and you just carry it around with you I always have my recorder right here in my iPhone, you uh-huh. know, and then if I'm at home, I'll always use my computer. That's great. Fourth song on the record is called Brains. I really like this one. Tell us about it. Thank you. Well, the, well, the name came up with uh, when I had my little tape, my little Sony tape recorder. I was, I was downloading ideas to my computer, and uh, as I'm doing it, my son came in and started saying Brains over top of it. I'm like, what's he saying Brains for? But anyways, you know, it, it, the song had this eerie intro that kind of sounded like a zombie kind of thing going on. So we decided to name the song Brains and let, you know, my son Austin be the the, the author of that, you know, that, that title. So, Does he get uh, writing credit? Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll tell everybody who did it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the fifth song is The Things I've Seen. Uh, it's somewhat ballad-like in the beginning, and it's got a great uh, and rather rich vocal texture, it seems to me. I love how you how you layered the vocals in this. Well, thank you. That was one that um, we that I had sitting around for a long time, played it with both probably Alter Bridge and Creed, but it was one of my favorite parts that never went forward. And when we were finishing up the record, Elvis had said, uh, what about that song, Don't Claim That You Know, that you know, they sang the chorus to me. I said, ah, oh, we didn't have time to put it together. He's like, if you, you have to, you have to put that song together for me on this record. You know, that's my that's my money song. You know, so I'm like, all right, if it means that much to you, we'll finish it. And uh, we had to scavenge parts. I had to take a bridge out of a song called um, Hollow that we had written for this album that wasn't going to make the cut. Just took that great bridge out of that song and put it into this, and the song was done, and we went with it. That's so cool. It strikes me that you have like a garage worth of materials because you, you talk about parts. You, mm-hmm. all your songs come in parts. Yeah. And so you've got a part here and a part here, and a, it's like Tremonti's garage or something. Yeah, I believe, you know, when, when, um, when I write, I try and write all the, make all the parts good. 
and then eventually when you put the songs together the whole song will be good if you try and if you write a part and then try and finish a song with stuff and you're forcing it uh, the verse could be a filler verse and the bridge could be a filler verse because you're just trying to finish the song but if you have all these parts and you know they're all good and you put them together then you're kind of you'll be satisfied with the whole song hmm. There's another song, uh, which is song number six, You Waste Your Time, Harder Edge, a lot of shredding that uh, probably really got you off, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, a riff, again, that I had played with Alter Bridge that seemed just a little too metal for, for the guys. You know, it's very kind of like Slayer-inspired um, riff in the beginning of that song. But the you know then it breaks down to a more melodic verse. And then uh, the, the chorus was um, something that I had always really dug and... Um, I think that chorus really helped me break out of my normal voice and really start pushing to this new sound that I that I was developing. Now, when you take a song uh, or a piece of a song to Alter Bridge or Creed, and they sort of say that doesn't quite fit our sound, mm -hmm. do you feel any sense of rejection when that happens? No, I've developed thick skin. You know, I've, <laughs> I've, I'm always you know throwing ideas at these guys, and the ones that I really like. The times I get rejected is when I really, really like something, and I tell these guys this part is great. You're gonna like it. That's when. That's when you know they they're expecting something great and they get something that they think is is a B or a C and they then they then then it hurts your feelings. But right. so what's so good about this project is uh, the stuff that they might not dig that I love. I can I can use whatever I want on this on this album. And uh, I grew up a metalhead. These guys might not have grown up with Slayers and and Metallicas. They grew up you know more of the classic rock or in Miles's case you know Stevie Wonder and stuff. So some of my tastes are different in theirs. That's cool, though. It gives you that outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven on the Tremonti album is called New Way Out. It's another ballad, and you said it was one of the hardest songs lyrically. How so? Uh, I think when you write a ballad, uh, with and it's you know it's serious in nature, it, it, it's, it's hard to keep it from being a love song. It's hard to keep it about somebody dying. It's hard, and it's, it's, um, it's hard to keep it from being corny. So it's, it, I wanted to make it um, seem like a genuine heartfelt song that wasn't that that spoke from from my life's experiences and that wasn't didn't have any sense of corniness to it and uh and uh it has one of my favorite choruses on the record on there and uh we're happy with the way it turned out but it was hard to put those lyrics together exactly how you wanted them yeah because i was just very uh, uh just just knowing that this this was the ballad and it needed to to have the credibility of, of the rest of the record being this heavy hard rock record i didn't want to all of a sudden have a sappy song in the middle of it that kind of stuck out as being something out of place number eight is giving up another great song i think and in it you sing i feel like just giving up uh it doesn't seem to me because you seem like such a positive person that you're the type that has ever given up on something um tell us about this song um it's about somebody who has uh is not who they used to someone who's lost their their drive they lost their strength and have been beaten up and and uh and feel like giving up essentially but like you said it's not a song about giving up it's just about fighting through it and i, I don't necessarily say it in the song but um i ask questions how are you going to turn it around in that song and, and um that's that's the thing is how, how are you going to how are you going to get through these these problems without without giving up essentially so it's not about you it's an observation of someone else yes okay mm -hmm. got it number nine is proof tell us about that um proof um that is about uh pretty much about somebody just um throwing away it's about a specific person i won't name his name but somebody who's giving all given all these opportunities um and every time they would hit any kind of wall they would just throw everything away and start over and just keep on quitting, just like giving up, same kind of vibe. Um, and it's just, it's irritating to see talented people with everything going for them um, hit, hit trouble sometimes and just, just throw everything away and lose everything they've worked for. And uh, that's the proof. It says wait, the proof is wasted all again. The proof that you're so talented is wasted when you just kind of give up and, and take your ball and go home when, right. whenever you hit some kind of problem. Now you observe that. Do you offer a, a solution or an answer? Um, no, not really. It's just it's just pointing it out, I guess. Right. Well, all songwriting is is observation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the writer will go, "Here's what I see as a problem. Here's what I see as a solution." Other times the writer will say, "Here's the problem. Fill in the blank." Right. Yeah. Right. And I mean that's a great that's a great thing about people who observe uh, in writing, whether it be in a book or in a film or any form of artwork. 
uh, those people observe things that are going on around them or around us collectively as a society and reflect it back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel a need to speak out politically in thing in things that you observe, or are you political in nature? No, no, I, uh, I, 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 I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to watching the news and knowing what's going on at every given moment. You know, I know, of course, the big ticket items going on in the world, but uh, I'm not one to preach any kind of specific. Uh, goals I have politically you know it's uh, I think everybody has their own reasons for believing what they do everybody lives in different states they have different everybody gets affected differently by what happens politically I, I think I think most of them are all corrupt bastards so <laughs> to be honest with you I don't trust any of them well I often equate politics to football um, in that you know uh, one you know Republicans Democrats whatever you know well I like the Eagles well I like the 49ers mm. you know and people get in their camps and they get very passionate about their belief their football team if you will mm-hmm. the only difference is these uh, and why i encourage people on the radio to vote is because these people make a difference in your life they have the ability to affect everything from your health care to your employment mm-hmm. to the you know state of the environment and things of that nature which are pretty heavy things so mm-hmm. uh, i encourage people to always get involved and vote i do vote i do Good. vote and i do believe in uh in what I believe, but um, I do think that even if you vote for somebody you uh, you think is going to do the right thing, they they're going to bite you in the ass eventually in some way or another. It's it's just I've seen it happen time and time again. The next song on the album, uh, track number ten, is the title track. It's called "All I Was," and you said the lyrics came easier than anything else on this album for you. How mm-hmm. was that? Um, well, that just phrase the phrasing of the melody just um, spit out words, you know, and. Uh, I had so many lines to work with. I just it was just coming up with the theme of it. Once I came up with the theme of it, it was easy to fill in the blanks. And um, there's so few lyrics on that song um, that it was it probably done within a few hours. You know, did it come right on the spot as you were writing it? Uh, no, I mean the the melody was written way before the okay. song was completed. So it's just when it came down to I, I never finish lyrics until the arrangements are done because arrangements change along the way, and then you have to change your lyrics and you've wasted your time. So. Um, uh, yeah, the lyrics, by far the easiest on the record. Track number 11 is Doesn't Matter. Mm-hmm. The only hopeful song on, <laughs> on the record, you know. It's about uh, it's about not harboring any hatred. And, and you know, I, I went a lot of years. This this record is, is a lot about being burned um, by folks that, you th- that were supposed to be there for you along the way. And uh, I've had a lot of people... Um, turn their back on me you know in, in this business and uh i had hatred a lot of hatred that just r- hurt my life it hurt my the way i'd be with my friends and family and uh i've decided in you know along the way somewhere that that that's just uh, all that negative energy is just it's just stupid to harbor all that and the song's just about uh, uh letting that go not holding all that that hate and just um trying to be a better man how do you release that though if you've had lifelong angers, resentments, how do you just say, okay, that's where it is, now I release it? How do you do that? I think it takes time. Uh, I think it takes growing up a little bit. I think when you're young and you, you're, you're full of piss and vinegar, you, you want to just fight everybody that's in one way or another, that uh, whether it be verbally or physically, that, that does you wrong. I think as you grow up, you realize that uh, the world's changed. It's not like high school. People have careers and they're, they're looking out for number one, and, and if they've got to walk over you to get to where they need to be they're going to do it and it's uh um when money gets in money is the root of all evil and, and you see it really come out in this business people will do uh whatever it takes to make that extra dollar even if it's losing your friendship and taking the money straight out of your your bank account or uh, cheating you to get there the final song on the album is called decay decay was a song that um didn't really uh it wasn't gonna make the record you know it was um it was we wrote it in the first batch of songs that we had done along with giving up and um when it came time to do the album i sang the song heard it back and it was one of my least favorites so i uh i pinpointed what i didn't like about the song was the verse and i asked elvis uh you know i'm either going to leave the song off or or you're going to have to be patient with me and let me rewrite it and re-sing it and he's like of course it's all for the better of the record so i took that verse and scrapped it rewrote it and uh now, now I dig it. And when we did the um, listening party with all of our fans that flew in to Chicago to hear the record, um, 
we had them all vote on these sheets, one through ten for each song, so we could help choose the singles. And uh, Decay was the top rated song. Wow. So thank goodness that we, you know, redid the song. Now, having said that, uh, why did you not go with that as the first single? Uh, because we we went with our gut and we went with our radio team, and there was other songs that were right up there with Decay. It wasn't just the standout of way above everything else, but it did have the top votes. We figured it was the last song, so everybody's going to be excited and give the big cheer for the last song and vote for the last song. But um, it, I don't think it made as much sense on the radio as You Waste Your Time. Were you in the room watching people listen to the record? Yep, the whole band flew up to Chicago. We weren't supposed to be in the room, but we wanted to surprise everybody. Huh. And uh, we had just recorded for three days. Uh, we shot the whole record live on video at an old Al Capone building. And upstairs in Johnny K's studio, he had a big listening party. So we walked up there, and as people entered the room, we were standing there and greeted everybody. That's and, cool. And uh, it was uh, kind of nerve-wracking watching a room of people listen to your music for the first time because it was uh, the room was echoey so you couldn't hear all the details i'm like come on we gotta put some baffling up or something but uh you're very vulnerable very exposed in that setting yeah yeah but uh everyone dug it everybody loved it that's so cool well there is the record so we hope you enjoy it the new record from mark tremonti is called all i was and it hits the stores july 17th those are all the tracks from mr tremonti himself